Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here with my continuing playthrough of, yes, you guessed it again, Hearts of Iron 3 with Black Ice 9.11, and we're playing as Japan. But let's go over here and watch the conquest of Yugoslavia. Again, I think it's interesting that... Um, that is a Croatian... No, it's uh, uh, no, not Croatian. Um, uh, Slovakian grant of the um, uh, Gross Deutschland. That's interesting. Don't know why the AI thought that was a good idea. Okay, artillery flexibility. Flexibility is always nice in many, many things. Okay, um, yeah, we'll stop that for the moment. Um, well, at least until, you know, 41. Uh, hedgehog, um, I think we'd rather do this first. Okay, I've also, let's, um, well, spent about an hour, saved it about halfway through, so, and then I tried to save it at the end. If, whether I'm talking to you and recording an episode, but just sitting here without the clock moving and hardly moving in the screen like this, or if I'm just letting, not having the clock move, and I was just obviously not talking or anything, and not recording, because I didn't know whether the recording software was somehow messing with the stuff, but just you know reorganizing things like this you know sending these units around to different places and that's one thing I am a bit lazy about I will fully admit to sort of like when the campaign is over yeah okay just leave the stuff there and there we go. well no and you know, this is just sort of busy work, if you will. But I also organized up the Thai army. Okay, well, I'll talk about, um, as, oh, I forget who, sorry. Um, mentioned that, and I, I just don't know, quite honestly, that Japan really didn't put pressure on um, Siam until after Pearl Harbor. And I'm totally believing that. Um, partially to put pressure on them beforehand would um, sort of show your hand that you're being more aggressive. But I think the reason this happened the way it did and when it did um, is goes down to the AI, purely down to the AI. Um, black eyes people what, play a lot of games and just sort of, you know, play, I think... Um, They've played a lot of games as Haiti and just do nothing and just um, crank up the speed and watch it roll and just see what happens. And Japan just never did a, you know, a Southeast Asia Pacific campaign. I mean, to the point of just not even doing it. And we're trying to simulate history. And they also had severe problems up in here so what i think is best for the ai is that this happens before and you turn this over to japan now um so and to get the pacific sort of or the southeast pacific or southwest pacific i guess from japan's perspective i guess I think this is Southeast Asia, but um, that's East Asia from Europe. Yeah, if we're talking Pacific, Southeast, or Southwest Pacific. But to get this to happen, they have a, a scripted invasions, which I don't think we're going to get. I am not planning on getting that. Um, I'm planning on doing all of the invasions myself. Okay, so um, the AI just, and they, they try and try their hardest with... Um, uh, having these things here 
um, Pacific momentum to try to get um, a, try to get the AIs, both the U.S. and Japan, to take these islands and to hold these islands. And this is quite honestly a failure of um, paradox and its AI. And so I totally agree with this scripted invasion because not maybe totally agree with exactly where they dump all the units, but um, with the idea of it, just because most people are playing as Germany and even if you're playing, say, as something as the U.S., you still sort of want Japan to sort of be like Japan was in, in history. You know, you could go, oh, we don't want them to make the same mistakes. Fine. But, you know, um, what are you going to do? And other issues. Okay, so I'm totally with it for that. Now, Siam, it would have added some ICs. One, two, three, four, and five ICs. If we had taken it. Um, but that isn't that much. And we will still get... Um, the resources that Thailand doesn't use in its ICs. So, um, now it was also pointed out maybe we shouldn't have gotten hold of the Royal Thai Army here. Um, I don't know if you know how much burning hatred and passion I have for um, the inability to control my puppets' armies and how bad even when they're not puppets, uh, allies like Romania and Hungary, that if I set these, you know, um, uh, allied objectives out somewhere out here, how badly they do and how much they don't help. And um, it just, to me, is sickening. I mean, I am, and I don't rant and rave about it too much because I sort of got used to it before I started making these series, but I hate what's going on with it. And then I watch, um, either playing as Germany or when I was playing as Italy, watching these um, minor allies actively contributing to AI's Germany advance, even though the whole front was a German front. And that meaning, I've seen, say, um, Hungary push so long as it's pushing into the Soviets, but once the, you know, sort of close the German pocket, they stop pushing. Similarly with... Um, Romania and such, but watching that, and then when I was landing up in here, you can watch the end of the Italian series, last few, you know, last 10 or 15 episodes, when I would push into a province and they would be attacked, see if they were attacking Azov from here and I was attacking from down here, say, we would take it and occupy it, and then the Germans would immediately and occupy it, and the Soviets would just hammer my weaker Italian forces. And so the um, AI allies, or AI fellow Axis members would support each other, but they would refuse to hold on to an Italian province and to the point of pulling things out. And that just even more infuriated the fuck out of me. <sighs> okay. So, as you can tell, I'm getting a bit mad about this. So, and this is the AI, and I don't know why the hell the AI is doing this. I don't understand it. I don't understand how Paradox can do such a thing why it would do such a thing why is it why is Romania going to support AI Germany but won't support human Germany I just don't get it and so um, I come from a background of playing um, uh, Third Reich um, the board game in which oh yeah you know basically none of the pieces were on the board until they join the war for one side or the other. And then, you know, say if Germany decided for some reason was invading Hungary, well, then the Allies would get control of the players. So I would quite honestly compare to this god-awful AI for this stuff to micromanage and control all of my um, Axis partners. You know, so you would control the whole country of Italy. You control the, you know, control every single country, not dumping all those forces into a greater super Germany. No, they're still Bulgaria. They're still going down the Bulgaria's limited tech paths of, you know, how much um, leadership they have. You know, so it's still Bulgaria and whatnot. So they're not, you know, 
I would rather do that and just micromanage the whole goddamn thing, including Japan, you know, and all of its stuff. I would rather do that than what I have to deal with now with the AI. I've, I have, like I say, I've, I've long come to, you know, stop ranting and raving about this long before, and I'm obviously I'm picking it up now, long before I ever got to making my first video for YouTube. But I would much rather be able to micromanage all of it than watch this crap show go on. Um, now, the problem with that, and there is a major problem with that, and it isn't that, well, players would be feeling overwhelmed so they wouldn't play it. Well, I'm just saying it is an option, you know. Click this button to manage your um, faction allies, you know. That's all I want. I mean, I'm not trying to force anybody else to do anything else. The major problem is, is the AI is so effing bad that it becomes, um, you know, untenable. We see uh, armored forces. While I'm battling it out somewhere in Africa, maybe even down here in Africa, we see armored divisions sitting back in the central USA somewhere, um, defending the, the victory point hexes or provinces, I keep saying both but um and i'm going yeah sure i i want america to you know have put a um a division of some sort on all the ports just in case somehow the fleet gets sunk and and an invasion gets through but there's no reason to put premier um historically premier armored divisions which should be fighting somewhere and have them stuck in the middle of the usa and have uh, oh so limited amounts of expeditionary forces and most of that stuff is forced that is just you know criminally stupid now of course the only thing worse than the um in my opinion and i could be wrong about this but the only thing worse than the hearts of iron 3 ai is the hearts of iron 4 ai so yeah <laughs> okay so, and I know, and I don't want to say it's any, because um, it's happened down in public. It's now years long buried in the forum, but I've had interactions with the lead AI developer. Oh no, we're, we're trying, you know, cause I would, you know, well, can we do it like a scripted invasion? Oh, that's too redundant. No. Uh, well, how about a, how about, can we have a um, sort of a um, WYSIWYG kind of thing that, um, Players could um, add in like sort of like battle plans, but add in battle plans that the AIs would then choose from, you know, randomly or, you know, you, and you could weight it. You know, this this is a really good battle plan. So it has a 20 percent chance of happening. This is a sort of sucky, but maybe use battle plan. Um, so it has a 2 percent chance of happening. You know, so I have a bunch of weights, you know, obviously up to 100 percent and it picks one. And then when conditions aren't met again, say, you know, they breached a few rivers, you know, Germany's pushed in. Well, OK, well, now what? Well, the defending these two provinces as as the Germans are pushing down here is a stupid idea. So let's retreat out of these two provinces and try to form up, you know, have a new battle plan. Oh, yeah. No, we're trying for a more dynamic AI that can um, better deal with these kinds of things and the, the formulaic stuff just isn't what in hell evidence do you have that you are going to be able to do this good dynamic AI that's going to be able to win wars over this over human humans not by, oh, well, we're going to make it harder for the human player by giving special bonuses to the to the defense. So, so um, you know, super hard. It, it gives the, gives France a lot extra IC so they can double the number of their divisions. And um, we're going to double the effectiveness of French divisions. No, I'm super hard versus super easy and everything in between should be purely purely AI levels. Nothing else should change. Nothing else should change in, in difficulty levels. Now you can have, whether it's random or 
somehow ministers choose it better strategies versus worse strategies versus historical strategies for say um what you know um because they have the different paths what um you know uh uh doctrine paths shall france take you know sit sit in force fortresses path or mobile armored divisions path you know you can you can have some of those things and whether you know follow the historic path or have random chances or you know what you, you know you can have that so that germany may be facing against france that decided in say 1937 to really invest in and go down uh, sort of good uh um de gaulle's um uh book that he published for more professional smaller instead of a mass i mean still not not entirely giving up the the levy and mass of French citizens to are to defend things, you know, like Maginot Line, but to develop a smaller, professional, mobile, uh, armored um, military force, and you know, so oh hell, you know, um, plunging deep into um, France just ends up getting you pinched off by a better French tank army. You know, God, that'd be that'd be you know, as a game player, that'd be excellent things to happen but not just because and maybe because of some of these decisions they reduce the amount of um, civilian use of ICs and put more into military but that doesn't mean that they and maybe start building more factories than they had originally but not just because they get super bonuses difficulty levels should be pure AI based okay So, back to this. Leaving these, most I put under that, and three divisions I put under that core, and two police forces I put under that core. Of course, historically, most cores were sort of three divisions. So, if you had three here, yeah, you sort of kind of almost need the the third core because that would be you know two police and one one other division or something um so putting the leaving this under the Thai military instead of giving it to the player and then we're still going to have a Thai military because we see a because the ai oh, we, we can't select it of course but the ai first wants to um create the um high command and then as time builds divisions and things so they may already have divisions in production um, diplomacy um, uh, do we get to see the what they're currently building I guess we don't I don't know I'm not used to do, dealing with that I don't think we do um, maybe under intelligence yeah that's where it is yeah I normally just don't even bother looking at it um, Siam production, not nothing. It's reporting producing. Okay. Um, we either we don't have the spies. Um, yes. So leaving that under. Um, Siamese Thai, whatever you want to call it, decision making is useless. So yeah, that's my thoughts on all this. Cause let's see if the Italian army continues to push, because they they're in here now. But oh, they're continuing to push here. They would never do that if it was an AI or a human Germany. They would never. They would push, maybe jointly occupy, you know, a province, and then oh, oops, now go back to our territory. I don't know what the hell it is that why it's doing it here and, not, and so it's got to be something whether it's human or not and I don't get it I don't get the understanding there may be something simplistic that they decided that oh it gives the player too much benefit bonuses maybe <sighs> So yeah, angry gamer this episode, I guess. Um, I didn't intend to be that. Not when I started. Was a little frustrated of having about a half an hour of work 
disappear in a crash because I didn't have the clock rolling for so much time. So it's and now if I, I do believe had I let the clock roll, I didn't want to let the clock roll because I wanted to um, have the clock roll and have you see the clock roll, you know, and what's going on here. But had I done that, I don't think I would have had the crash. Just for your information, if you're playing and whatnot and deciding to go, oh, yeah, um, you know, after working or, you know, just maybe pausing the game for an hour or two uh, and going, you know, answering a phone call or eating a meal or whatever it might be. And then, oh, well, I'm back. Well, I don't want to keep playing now. Let me just save it. If you just save it without the um, letting the clock roll you probably get a crash for some reason, and I don't know why. Okay, so those are all grayed out. Uh, okay. I just don't, you know, do I need to build battle cruisers? They're not bad to build. They may be very nice as in good battle statistics, fast speed, and not that expensive compared to proper battleships. That very well may be a good thing to do. Okay, good. I'm glad all you guys are buying my supplies. Okay, yeah, let's do the air show event. It's impressive Air Force until May 41 reorganization, sure. Okay. These guys belong to us. Fine. And, um... Okay. Everything has exited the red, but I think it would have done anyway, so... I do want to save this just in case, again, that we've let it clock roll some. Okay, so what I want to do here is politics, create a puppet, Jiang, and there we go. Well, they were, okay. So now we have a puppet. Um, I don't believe their um, quality, and they may even drop the quality of things like radar and whatnot. If won't increase as we increase so that is a reason Ooh, we've um gotten some good things because of that uh these guys are yeah i i looked and i didn't see a, a console thing to flip these guys into the axis i really would love to again as i said before primarily this one because i want the soviets to see these as um especially once germany's at war they're at war with some axis members to see them as a big threat to want to put stuff on the border. So we've lost the effects of regional puppet master and gained the effects of puppet master now. So 5% um, instead of 25 on um, uh, national manpower modifier and money and 4% instead of 2% on resources. Very good. And as we noted before, which we could still see, yep, they've got some factories out here. They're having to rebuild their air base or something. For, or maybe it was still just red. I don't know. Wasn't fully deployed, maybe. Yeah. But, okay. So, yeah. Five IC, six ICs. Big deal. I mean, it's a loss, but it's not really anything we need to cherish. And I don't really need to too much want to occupy it. They're getting some divisions, it looks like, already. And we're just going to keep these militia people out here, and I'll form some headquarters for them at some point. Um, well. Let's look at infrastructure levels. That sort of, let's start sending some of these guys out here. No reason to finish their movement in the wrong direction. Okay. 
Okay, so we've gotten... I want to go to here because this does share a border there. I do think I did have a... I only want to continue your, your path this way instead of stop and start again there. So... Keep going, just keep going. And I'm miscounted by Oh well, guess I am strategic movement. I miscounted by one because I need one more. And maybe it was here. Did I not know I got well I don't know where I miscounted the number provinces so what what are these divisions god it takes so this is the other thing is is um i know we're not going to get railroads for this and um one guy i forget um was building a dlc and it got canceled because hearts of iron 4 was coming out so fast um no it didn't obviously a militia and a cavalry um that was going to add railroads I don't know how firm the deal was, but there was definitely, you know, a possibility, uh, you know, possibility to build a a DLC, and because speed getting out here should not be dependent on the lack of infrastructure, because they're not driving; they're taking a train. And if they're not taking a train, they should be walking or driving normally. Okay. Medium bomber prototype. Um, grayed out. As I thought. Naval bomber prototype. Yep. And cruiser anti aircraft control. That is grayed out very nicely. Okay. Heavy anti aircraft armament there for you. Um. Switching over there from the other stuff, and I guess that uses up all my leadership there. Assigned. And I don't, obviously, these divisions moving around just very well may be usual sort of AI shuffle. Oh, we need more divisions to protect on this border. Oh, oops, there is no connection via the land but still um i do think we will have more of a reaction out of them if they see more of a threat from us and i'm trying to do that okay um can we sell to the soviet union again because they were buying from us ah oh, yes Very good, because I'm just noticing our money's going down, and I want to keep it. Oh, they're mobilizing their armed forces. Good, fine. You're in the Axis, so you think you might be getting to go to war with somebody because members of the Axis are at war. Um, no. I want to build up my no. surprise it happened this way I don't know whether that was Italy going to war and it sort of kind of looks like it with Yugoslavia here or if it was Germany Cause this is normally what I do you know in May 1940 so this is why I'm sort of surprised this is what I do in, in May 1940 is to go to war with um, not normally keep Italy out of it but um, go to war with Yugoslavia which brings Greece into it early instead of going down the path of getting Yugoslavia into don't need a trade agreement when you only have one port left and it's about ready to fall even if I like the trade agreement. Um, 
instead of trying to get them into the axis and then have them leave the axis and then invade. Okay, industrial production has advanced. Very good. And yeah, that's too far ahead. Very soon we'll get industrial efficiency to counteract the negative um, six, but it also counteracts some of the IC benefits. Artillery brigade, brigades advance. Very good. And we'll stop that. Heavies, um, mediums. We have very few mediums, but um, so I don't know. Are we really going to get desert um, or Arctic fighting? You know, from Germany, I'm doing that. Okay, we'll do medium gun advance. That would be nice. I'm doing that for sure, because obviously we're going in the desert and we're going to be fighting in the Arctic. So, yeah. Um, light bomber prototypes, which, yes, are also grayed out. Um, Oh, well, let's, yeah, let's continue. Let's do armor piercing capped improvement. And we have more research possibilities, I think, because we've gotten dual purpose 80 or AA 80 guns. Yes, we'll grab that one up. That is something the Japan, Japanese didn't do, to the best of my knowledge, at all. Um, I think, at least of the heavy ones, um, I believe only Germany had dual purpose. Um, let's, is that heavy? Um, dual purpose, well, not specifying. He well, no, it's heavy AA. Yeah, only Germany is the only nation that did dual purpose heavy, um, uh, AA anti-tank guns. And I can say that with some confidence, no matter how much you want to try to tell me that, um, uh, either the British heavy AA guns or the Americans, um, and even show real examples of them using them against whether tanks or um, ground targets. Um, to the best of my knowledge, not, Italy, who had some heavy AA guns, but mm, and they were okay, but limited production and not, not so great. The Soviets definitely had some heavy guns. I think they were 85 millimeter guns. Um, the U.S., I think, had 75 and... 90 millimeter AA gun. Britain also had a bunch, and I, I think they also got lend lease American stuff. A lot of heavy stuff, you know, that you see shooting at the um, V1, you know, rockets coming low over over Britain and whatnot. A lot of those types of guns. Um, that Yes, yeah, some of those guns were most assuredly deployed to field divisions and not just, you know, defending strategic targets. The problem is that although many of them would shoot horizontally, any re any significant repeated use would break them if they were shooted shot shooted shot horizontally it just from what i've read is their recoil mechanisms were all designed to deal with high angle recoil down towards the base you know the platform of the gun and uh, if you were to shoot you know i'm not saying shoot five rounds at a tank that shows up is going to break the gun but consistent use at a flat trajectory, uh, you know, a horizontal trajectory, is going to break the guns. That's my understanding of just about all of the um, guns, at least from one thing was that was looked at some of the, you know, the U.S. and the Americans, or I mean, U.S. and the British, um, looked at that. So um, it was only the Germans with their 88s and some of their others, you know, the heavy ones, um, that were designed to be able to deal with the recoil um, fired on a horizontal basis. And obviously that's the heavy AA units. It doesn't affect, you know, 40 millimeter, which, and less, um, like the Orlikan guns and the um, Bofors guns were most assuredly um, dual purpose, though most of them did not have um, anti-tank or anti-armor ammunition, at least issued to most of the um, units. So they were often used as 
really good um, fire support weapons. Um, particularly, I know the Americans used a lot of those as fire support weapons against the ground targets because they were all, they all came prepared to deal with um, enemy air attacks, and they didn't have any, you know, enemy air attacks against them, or very few, because they, you know, killed the Luftwaffe. So, yeah, and what was remaining of the Luftwaffe was trying to keep um, Germany from being bombed. So um, you have very, very few airstrikes. So most of the um, divisional anti-aircraft units were sort of pressed into service as um, effective, uh, reasonably effective fire support for infantry operations. And here we go again, um, improving this. Very good. And twin engines for the landing craft. Okay, so that... Okay, fuel consumption up, fine. We're doing okay with fuel. <laughs> of course we are. <laughs> the thing Japan, Japan needed the most. We've got more than we know what to do with. Yeah. Okay, this is how crazy this game is. But we want the increased range for our landing craft flotillas, most assuredly. Um, invasion tactics? Um, yeah. We'll move some of those other stuff over here. Invasion speed, aircraft. Eh, we'll do it. Invasion speed. Get ashore before they can react to us. That's what that is effectively doing. Now, um, we'll, we'll get some metal, but see, um, now that we have something of a positive outcome, we're going to wait for the Soviets and then we're going to try to buy some Soviet metal. So I'm not importing metal from, um, well, maybe, you know, um, I guess, I don't, I guess it would be, I don't know if we come across the border here or we'd have to bring it here, but from very, very short, um, distances. Okay. We now have the full historical axis modifier. Um, don't know how that happened. It, oh, I guess Romania is now in it, and maybe Bulgaria is now an Axis member. I don't know. Um, okay. Full historical. That's nice. Um, re National Revolt Risk. That will be keep us in the green even more. Though, of course, um, for these non-core provinces, we have um, sort of some minimums here. Don't know exactly why it's below two, but um, that is the minimum revolt risk. So even if we go, you know, should be well into the green and even more it'll stay at that which is fine um more manpower great more ic's great two percent more ic's oil energy metal raw material rare materials I keep saying raw but it's rare um supplies money leadership modifier territorial pride espionage now, espionage was a really a two-way thing um the U.S. did some really good espionage against um, Italy, both in the U.S. and I think in Italy, and got some of the code books, and so that they were finding out what the Italians were doing and talking about, and found out, I think, some of the, you know, particularly before the U.S. even enters the war, find out what the, you know, that they were, you know, sending messages about what the Germans were going to be doing in North Africa and passing it on to the, the British. And, of course, um... The Japanese were getting informed from their ambassador in Berlin about um, uh, German plans, and the U.S. was reading that, so it understood what the Japanese thought about because it was their ambassador who would get briefed on things. And of course, you know, maybe you know, propagandally briefed on. We've got these wonder weapons, you know, coming in and whatnot, and you know, they they'll be here any day, you know, to like buck up the Japanese so it may not be true facts facts but it's you know the facts that the Germans wanted to have plus his own observations on the ground because they did go out to the front in different areas and did sort of know what was going on too and he was reporting his information that he understood um, as correctly as possible back to Japan and so even though we're getting a, a bonus um, and there was definite back and forth bonuses within the access too. There was also actually a historical penalty there. And it might be better just to make it a penalty. Ruling party support. Again, I talked about that earlier on, how being part of a bigger group makes things go better. Research efficiency. Like I said, late war, that was really going on with Japan. Um, 
IC efficiency, yeah, that sort of ties into the previous one. Supply throughput, yeah, officers, yeah, okay. Um, USS Hornet is launched. Okay. Um, naval strike tactics, CAG efficiency and naval strike efficiency, that's good. Let's take a quick look at that. See what year we're on. Okay, that's pushing not too far ahead to even think about doing it, but I'd rather move it to um, that, I think. Okay, new monumental building for the nation. Let's see the plans. Um, okay, yes, that's what I was expecting here. Um, let's look at strategic effects. Uh, <coughs> what do we want to do next? Revolt risk down, that would be incredibly good. So fear national police building, that would be good. That's strong on the list. Foreign ministry. War ministry, that is also high on the list. But that we could maybe do sort of next. When are we going to get to... Um, 42, okay, so 41 is, I mean, if we push it early, it's going to be the soonest that we go with that. Okay, um, land, air, naval, organization, or, this I don't think, is, it may be worth the money, I don't know, maybe daily defense, um, Central intelligence, that's re reasonably worth it, because especially for the research efficiency and espionage bonus. Um, ruling party support is nice. Palace of Justice, I don't think is worth the money to do that stuff and get the negative ruling party support. Um, finance ministry, maybe. Um, Imperial foreign ministry, that's also worth it. But let's look at here okay we've got vietnam but we're eh, maybe i don't know soon we'll be having more forces i did move some of the royal thai police there i'm moving the other royal thai police down this way to help police up here um we're going to be having a lot of Various revolt risks going on. But we can start researching that <coughs> in 41, and we're not really looking at invading. I'm sort of planning, again, the historical date. So we can do that, um, maybe get that going, actually, you know, re researched and in place either in 41 or by early 42 for moving into much of that. So I think we can wait on that. Um, that Again, the, these two are useful and good, and I would pick them at some point. But I think Imperial War Ministry is the best key here. Um, and it's at the top of the list. And this is partly because you can see here five or one thousand money and gain descent and supplies is part of the reason I'm wanting to make sure that we have lots of money for things and a reasonable amount of supplies for things. Okay, um, no, decline, decline, and we can do more research, okay, um, no, we're not doing giant infrastructure projects, so don't just pick it because it's a good year date, gamer, um, I think we're going to push down this route. Next. Oh, we got a bunch more. So, um, we'll do that heavily. 
Okay, now a little bit more, so we will... Um, let's do that. We've got a bunch of land-based radars all around here, as you well know. I pointed out, you know, level 3 out here. Don't know exactly how far we're going to be able to see out into the water effectively, but the more effective it is, the more effective it is. It's sort of kind of interesting how that works. Oh, you're running out of supplies. So, get back to there. Um, okay. Uh, okay, but you weren't meant to stay there. You were meant to... These forces were meant to come up to here. Here. We get ready to invade Burma, not just hang out in the capital. Now we are thinking about invading and not holding the border, so I don't need to put them on every frontline province, but. Um, Okay, I think that'll be good. These guys are down here to come down here. And rapidly in a non-historical way, meaning that they're going to use... Um, motorized forces, which are not as I'm suggesting, historical. Okay, oh, their HQ is way too far away. What is still up here? Okay. An infantry division. Well, they can disconnect from that. And... Well, they can come down in a... Um, well, let's see if they can board ship and come down now. Okay, well, we should be transferring supplies into Thailand. Yeah, I'm also calling it Thailand as well as Siam, which will... Help us... Um, supply the units. Okay. Imperial War Ministry. Again, we're getting the effects of that. Great. Um, Secretary of Public um, Information and Education, basically propaganda, reduces our manpower but increases our leadership some more. So that's good. Stop that. Um, pocket battleships, we've now been able to do that. And I wanted to see here. Okay. Um, oh, wrong, close. Um, yeah. Uh, pocket battle. Oh no, not uh, or battleship. Twenty-one versus pocket battleship. Ooh, that's a lot cheaper. Yeah, that's maybe better than. Yeah, we're going to build three of those. When will they be built if they're immediately May forty-one? Okay. And we're going to, we're getting through, obviously we're getting through that radar very, very soon. These will come um, through soon as well. And we're going to go back up to least basic needs, which is going to cut into production, I know. And now we have famous armed forces. All three branches of armed forces are organized, basically because we had the air show just now. So um, that should add a modifier, I believe. Brazil, give them money for metal. No, like I said, we're waiting on the Soviets to trade more with them. Okay, a control system. And that does it. Oh no, we have a little bit more, so we will do fire control solutions. Britain, no. Diplomacy, Soviet, still not.
Okay, and we're going to end the episode here. I want to thank you all for liking the videos, if you would. Thank you for watching, of course, just even that. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. YouTube School tells me I need to keep inviting you to do so. Um, and I really especially love hearing from you, so please post some sort of comment um, down below. See you next time for more Hearts of Iron.